Welcome back. Before I get back to my guests, we'd like to show you a little report. Now, our PTV World production team prepared a special package on the top female athletes in Pakistan. Let's listen in. Sana Mir is the changing face of women cricket in Pakistan. Legendary Sana Mir, studying engineering, took a 360 degree turn and became a cricketer. She has been the proud captain of the nation's women cricket team and has stood undefeated with a gold medal in hand not one but two times in Asian Games 2010 and 2014. Katy Perry's tune, I'm a champion and you gonna hear me roar, suits Naseem Hamid just right. Silencing mocking tongues of the society, she rose to fame as South Asia's fastest woman, winning the 100 meter in mere 11.81 seconds at South Asian Federation Games of 2010. Turning her childhood fantasy of conquering mountains into a full-blown living reality is the world's most youngest Muslim woman and Pakistan's first fearless female, Samina Khayal Beg. This 25-year-old mountaineer has scaled startling heights of seven summits, including Mount Everest. Determined about her goal, she clearly proves that Pakistani women are second to none in any sphere of life. Footballer Hajra Khan is the winner of 2011's South Asian Beach Games held in Sri Lanka. Hajra is also the only athlete in the history of Pakistan's women football to record 100 goals in her club career. At such a young age, the sports star has proved herself as not only the finest football player, but also a bona fide role model for all the women in the sports industry. Maria Turpake Wazir, the Pashtun girl of Vana, broke all stereotypical walls to pursue her passion for squash. Disguising herself as a boy, Maria used to play with her brothers on the streets of her volatile hometown. Despite life threats from extremists, the tomboy player boosts winning of first ever women's event in the Nash Cup in Canada. The Southwest Squash Open and the Liberty Bell Open. Right, those are our top uh, female athletes and we wish them all the best and I'm sure there are many more to come. I still have my uh, guests here with me. Mehek, I was speaking to you uh, before, uh, before the break and uh, you mentioned that uh, before we also went to the break, I mentioned that the three of you have uh, been encouraged by, uh, by, by your parents, by your families. You've been, you've been very lucky. In that little package we just saw, uh, a girl who plays squash, she had to disguise herself um, as a boy and, and face threats. And we're in 2019 here, Hina. Uh, you know, and sometimes I still think, yeah, of course, women have made strides in, uh, in sports and in, sport in, in sports and in various fields. But we still have a long way to go, don't we? Let's face it. Uh, basically, if I talk about cycling, so um, it is a start of, uh, in 2019 it is, but uh, the Cy PCF, Pakistan Cycling Federation, it has started in 1947 uh, from Peshawar. But uh, nowadays in Pakistan, nobody knows about cycling as well. Uh, um, uh, not in, even in Islamabad as well. So uh, the motivation of cycling and the gr uh, creation of the groups that I have, uh, I just told you about, these are the motivation things that uh, can motivate women to ride in Islamabad. And basically as far as the challenges, uh, there are many challenges that I faced actually as well. So uh, by motivating uh, cycling in Islamabad, I think uh, that will uh, motivate women as well as that's a very good step to uh, progress in uh, as a field of uh, in cycling as well as in Pakistan as well to promote cycling. Misba, you mentioned you're from, uh, you're from Hunza, which is a comparatively more emancipated uh, area. So you didn't have uh, the difficult, some of the difficulties that, that, that other women have had when they wanted to, when they wanted to get into sports. What sort of recommendations do you have? What would you tell uh, parents of young, uh, of young girls who, who are sporty and who want to make it a profession? Uh, I just want to say that encourage them. Let them free whatever uh, field they want to choose. I mean, let them freely to go in every field they want to pursue their career in. That's why. 
Yeah, I, I think it's important yeah. that you know parents get the message that mm -hmm. they uh, understand that there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. a girl playing sports. I know it, it's hard to, to to break down those barriers, barriers. Those, those those stereotypes, but it needs to, it, it it needs to happen sooner or later. No, it really does. I mean, like you said, we're in 2019 now. And it's just a sport at the end of the day, you know, they're not doing anything wrong, they're not doing anything bad. And the thing is, sport is so good for you, it's so good for your body and like, it's, it's exercise at the end of the day and it's, if, it's, if it's something you're passionate about and it's something that you really want to pursue, you know, whether you're a boy or you're a girl, it really doesn't matter, you know, parents should really encourage their children because sports, even when children become interested in sports, you know, they, they turn away from like any other things that their parents wouldn't want them to get into. And sport is a good thing to want to put your children into. So, I mean, I would definitely tell them to encourage their children. I mean, it makes a lot sports. of sense, especially now. Now, this is just not exclusive to girls. This includes young boys. I mean, there's, um, you know, we've got, especially living here in Islamabad and across the world, there's a serious drug problem. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to get involved in, in drugs and alcohol and all these terrible habits. And uh, with, with social media now, the internet, uh, kids who have the internet, who have access, uh, who have access to, to the internet, don't want to really get out and play sports. So it's very important that parents and society uh, encourage these good habits. And as you mentioned, living in, Isla in, living in Islamabad, Hina, I just saw on the way here when I was going to the women's march, the women's rally, there was a cycling team. Uh, they, were, they were cycling around F6. I think yes. they'd come from F9 Park or something. And just anyway. like, you know, looking at, looking at them cycling in the background, it was so beautiful. It's a perfect opportunity. And I saw young kids as well involved. It's a great opportunity for parents to, to, to encourage their children to, to take part in something like this rather than getting involved in, in anything else, really. Yes, basically uh, in our group uh, at first when I joined, there were like 15 or 16 women and uh, other than were men. But uh, now our, we are encouraging and organizing events in which we are motivating young children to ride with us as it's a very safe ride, uh, sport as well. So as inauguration of cycling lanes uh, has also been uh, inaugurated in Islamabad as well. So uh, that's a very uh, safe, secured uh, project uh, inaugurated by the CTA. And uh, motivation for children and for women are a very great part and a very great role in Pakistan to promote women and to uh, have a setback um, and to motivate them in every field of life. And motivating children, especially that will lead to a very uh, healthy Pakistan in future as well. I mean, you mentioned a, a healthy Pakistan, not only healthy for your body, but healthy yes. for your mind as well. Mm -hmm. I, I find that, I mean, this is just a simple example here, if I go to the gym in the morning and then get to work, uh, my thinking is a lot better. I feel a lot better. And that's what needs to be understood as well. That's why it's essential for young men and women uh, to, to, to play sports. Exactly. Uh, it's not like sports is for only one gender. It's, it's, every, it's for everyone. So uh, if you talk about women's sports in Pakistan especially, uh, we face a lot of challenges and a lot of criticisms. Like uh, if, uh, if I talk about women's sports in Gilgit, Baltistan, uh, I myself, I'm working for organizing different camps, different trainings for them to earn, encourage them, to empower them through sports. We are basically using sports as a tool to empower them. Meg, another thing, uh, and something else we need to talk about. Now, we just saw this package that our production team uh, prepared about mm -hmm. the top female athletes. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got to be honest with you here. I'm, I've been, a, sport, I've been a, a sports anchor, been doing this show for a few years now, and I didn't know some of those names. Mm -hmm. I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Women just don't get enough exposure, female athletes, mm -hmm. especially in the media. That's something else that needs to change now. And it's a lot easier. We're not in the 70s or the 80s mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, you've got, uh, you've got the internet, you've got it right here on your yeah. phone, the television. I mean, th 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 there's so many ways to promote uh, and encourage female athletes now, but we still, we still don't do it. I mean, like you said, there's social media, there's the television, there's so many places where these women can be promoted and women should be promoted. But I think the problem in Pakistan is that, you know, everything is just, majority of sports are just surrounded by cricket and it's men's cricket. It's not even women's cricket because one of the top athletes that we saw in that video, she was a women's cricket player. And I mean, 
can I, like honestly speaking, I'm an athlete, and even I didn't know about her. I knew about one of, I knew about the other two, Sana but I didn't know. Yeah, but I didn't know about her. And it's surprising because it's because they haven't had enough exposure on television or anything of the sort, even on sports channels in Pakistan. So you know, it's just a matter of priority for these sports channels, and it's a matter of you know how how we decide to. Ex like give them exposure on these channels. But I mean, yeah, because sad. this is where, yeah, we've talked about how families need to be encouraging. There's no doubt about that. But I think the media also has a central role to play. Mm -hmm. I know this is my fraternity, but this is something we're very guilty of. Mm -hmm. We haven't promoted women in sport or women in any field for, for that matter. We've got, we've got a lot of catching up to do, Hina. Uh, yes, as uh, it's uh, 2019 and uh, in 2019, uh, everybody, in, especially in media, they, as Mehik said, that everybody's promoting men in life. As uh, in women uh, and in gender equality, there should be equality among more, both the genders. But uh, on the same page, uh, it is the um, effect on the women as well that we don't promote uh, women as um, they are also a main entity in, in producing or in developing a country uh, such as Pakistan, a very uh, peaceful nation. So uh, I would recommend uh, and I would suggest that uh, to motivate women as uh, in the media as well as we are trying an effort to, uh, as Mehek is a uh, player, as tennis players as well. So uh, we all are all promoting to have a, um, uh, a stage or a platform to represent ourselves or women of Pakistan to have a, uh, and to promote uh, health, healthy wise and for a gender promotion as well. Oh, that will make you perform better, won't it? Knowing that you're receiving uh, acknowledgement uh, and attention, that will make you want to do better in your sport. Exactly. Um, it's like uh, we don't get facilities and those opportunities. We missed all of them. Like if you talk about the, our leading uh, organization, organizations like our um, federations, we didn't get the, those opportunities like representing Pakistan at, at international level. But now we are trying ourselves. Like I have started my own academy, volleyball academy. It's the first volleyball academy for girls in Gilgit. I'm trying to uh, encourage girls to come on the field to participate as much as sports they want. So, yeah, go ahead. And, you know, it's just another thing that I feel like women should get more attention in Pakistan because it's so rare to actually see a women athlete like in Pakistan. You know, we always see male athletes, but we don't really see that many women. So I feel like when you and the thing is, they put in so much sweat, so much hard work, even though in Pakistan, women have more responsibilities at home than men do or anything of the sort. But they go out there, you know, they take out time from their schedules and they put in so much hard work and you know willingness and effort and stuff so I think because it's so rare in Pakistan that they should be given more attention but it's just sad that that hasn't happened. So no, I guess I mean look if you look all over the world really uh, mm -hmm. women are still I mean they're not where men are men I mean if you yet. look e even even the United States for mm -hmm. example I mean, in sport men and women uh, the, 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 there's no equal pay there like mm -hmm. women female tennis players get paid less, less yeah. than men don't mm -hmm. they yeah. so they've got their own challenges but over here we're still very like far behind, beha yeah, behind. behind and we need to make uh, we need to be more conscientious we need to make a concerted effort, effort. and like okay so you if you drive down uh, f6 barkas for example mm -hmm. supermarket what i really liked was uh, there's an uh, an uber ad and sana mir mm -hmm. uh, uh, sana mir is on uh, uh, is on there and that that's great and all but there needs there needs to be more of that more of that yeah no i completely agree with you because I mean, like we said, you know, Pakistan is way far behind and it's so rare over here when a woman does do some kind of activity, like, she, you know, she picks up a sport and she really, you know, pursues it. So I feel like there should be more encouragement of it. And in order to encourage that more, in order to get more women involved, there has to be attention given by the media. So I mean, the idea is, you know, like while, while I was looking at that board, I went, oh, wow, like I, I, I was surprised. I'm waiting for the day when it's not a surprise, where it becomes mainstream, where you actually see uh, female athletes on advertisement boards and billboards, uh, that needs to happen faster. Uh, yes, uh, it's the 21st century. I think uh, it's we are getting into that uh, thing that having a promotion of all the females as it is uh, just a start. So we all uh, pray and we I think uh, we all motivate uh, ourselves and other women to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, sport activities and plus it is a very uh, vital part of the media to represent ourselves or to present ourselves as a role model for all the other women and inshallah I hope there will be more uh, I think uh, women in all other fields of sports as well. Now Misbah let's get to, to your sport volleyball you mentioned uh, your academy and I'm sure you're hoping there are more 
uh, more volleyball academies across exactly. across the country. And it's one of those mm -hmm. sports that's a, a lot of fun to play. Exactly. You know, I mean, I love, like during Ramzan, I mean, I, I love playing volleyball. So do all my friends. And the best part is, is that girls can uh, love getting involved as well. So I'm sure... It, it, th that it makes it easier then to promote a sport like that where, where everybody wants to get involved. Yeah, exactly. Volleyball is a, uh, it's really a thrilling game. But uh, in Pakistan, we don't have any recognition in this sport. We don't have even our s female sports team to, that represent at international level. That's really sad. I mean, now on, on to tennis, Meg. I mean, men have a hard enough time being recognized in yeah. tennis. I can't even imagine how, how, how girls yeah. must feel. Yeah, I mean... In, in Pakistan, tennis isn't very popular, as we know. But, um, yeah, it's, it's tough for us, you know. Like, even just starting, like, we just wanted the Federation and the Pakistan Sports Board to start sending us abroad again to, you know, begin international women's events, like, to, you know, start making us compete in international events again. And, you know, that takes a lot of effort because they're always going to put the men first. They're always going to be like, okay, you know, we have to do the stuff for the men first and then the women will come. So it's, I mean, we're kind of used to being put in second place, but, you know, there are improvements coming and it's it's really good because now they have, you know, they've started sending women's, the women's team again, you know, internationally to play Fed Cup That's and, great. you know, and all these other events, which is great because, you know, as we know, international sports were banned in Pakistan for quite some time, like there weren't even international events happening in Pakistan. So it's pretty good. There is progress now, but um, I still think there's a long way to go, but it's always good, you know, it's always good to look at it positively and to see that there is progress it's, from before. It's great that progress is being made and certainly is being made mm -hmm. and I'm glad um, you've, ignored, you've highlighted that but mm -hmm. there's still, there are more challenges yeah, there are, to, there are, and, and, and we need to face that. Mm -hmm. So what, um, because you've been, you've been playing tennis for a while now, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to young girls who want to get into tennis or, or any sport for that matter? You mentioned before that you know, sometimes you, cheeky comments were made. Mm -hmm. uh, boys are usually given more attention than the girls mm -hmm. are. So what advice would you give them to, to sort of soldier through that? I would tell them that if they're really passionate about any sport, they should just go in there and they should try their hardest. I, I know it's really hard to ignore negative comments from outside sometimes, but it will just, it will just be better for you if you just focus on yourself and focus on making yourself better. And just if you really love what you're doing and you really enjoy it, then you just have to ignore all the negative comments because at the end of the day, when you overcome those challenges, they won't be able to say anything to you. So just try to enjoy what you have, what you're doing, and just, you know, just focus on yourself, focus on making yourself better at your game, at your sport, so you can break those barriers down and you can become a role model for women in the future as well so that you can be somebody that all other women will look up to in the future. That's I mean, I guess advice. when you're constantly told that you're not good enough mm -hmm. or you're constantly told that you're not meant to be here uh, it really must get to you I mean it's hard to sort of adopt this water off a duck's back mm -hmm. philosophy but you know when, when, when you're constantly uh, you know fed negativity you know finding that willpower to try uh, to try and shield it, it, it is very difficult uh, yes, uh, sure it is, but uh, as there are many organizations that I just told you about uh, and a platform for girls to or women to have a uh, very secured environment and the group that we have are all uh, based on the men and women and children as well, so they've, they, they're like a family. A critical mass Islamat, you have noticed that that's in Pakistan, uh, Lahore as well and that's in Karachi as well, CML and CMK. So that's a very uh, organized society in which we motivate and we support uh, women as well. So that's a very great platform in which if uh, the family is not supporting or the public is not supporting the women or uh, in case of any harassment or verbal uh, abuse. So I think that's a, a, a group in which I think uh, if you're going in a group, it's a very protective and a very secured uh, ride or a very secured uh, sport for women. So I would uh, like to um, share that uh, we should motivate, we, uh, we need to motivate more women in uh, this sport because it is a very uh, elude kind of a support. And I would recommend that I had many harassments before when I just joined in CM, uh, CMI before. But as I used, uh, as I uh, also uh, uh, went for the uh, uh, championship as well. So they knew that this is not kind of a sport that is just for women as well. 
So by that, they, I recognized my uh, personality as well, and I gained uh, uh, respect for women and for for the sport as well by all public and all means. Uh, Ms. Ba, I'd like you to pick up where uh, Meg left off. You know, being able to uh, to sort of hear that negativity and then put it aside in one ear out the other. So what sort of advice would you give uh, young women who want to get involved in sport who yeah. are constantly being told that they shouldn't be here or they're just not Yeah, good exactly. I, I guess uh, that's what makes us strong, a strong woman. Uh, we all, it's not just in the case in Pakistan, it's all around the world, it's all over the world, like facing uh, patriarchy, fighting with stereotypes, everything. Uh, I guess that's what makes us a strong athlete, strong person. I mean, that's, I mean, she hit the nail on the head there. You're, you're also, you're fighting yeah. stereotypes. You're fighting uh, outdated customs. Mm -hmm. well, that's what it is. People won't like that, but it's the mm -hmm. truth. So you have to develop thicker skin. I mean, I just mentioned that it's, it's even hard for, for, for guys. It's hard for yeah. men playing tennis, volleyball, or getting into cycling, or even hockey for that mm -hmm. matter. But again, for, for girls, I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. So you have to have much thicker skin then. You have to be really mentally strong, but <laughs> it does, it makes you stronger because you realize with time, even in the beginning, if you feel like, you know, it's making you weaker or you can't do it, but because you have so much love for the sport that you just want to keep continuing it. And then it does, it makes you really strong and it makes you mentally really strong. And I feel like that can even benefit you when you're playing a match or, you know, you go for something because you become mentally so strong and... You know, you just want to fight against all that negativity even more. You want to fight against it and you want to it makes you prove hungrier. those people. Yeah, you want to prove those people wrong. You want to prove everybody wrong that thought anything negative about you. So, I mean, in a way, you can even look at it positively. It just depends on how you want to take it. You know, you're, you're always going to face negative things in life, no matter what. But it just all depends on how you want to take that thing in. Do you want to produce something negative out of it or do you want to produce something positive out of it? No, I think what you just said yeah. there was very was very important and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book the other day and uh, I don't know how I got there but I'm there. <laughs> so uh, he said something very important that he was, uh, he was a young boy living in Austria. He had no money when he came to the United States. He wanted to become a world champion in weightlifting. They said People said, you can't do it. He wanted to become an actor. They said, you can't do it. And uh, then he became a politician. And they told him again, no, you can't do it. And he said, instead of feeling sorry for myself, instead of you know, feeling bad and thinking, oh, you know, maybe these people are right. I should just give up. That actually, people who said no to me, that motivated me. That actually, their negativity towards me gave me strength. Because that's how I interpreted it. It's all about how you choose to interpret situations. Uh, yes, uh, basically, as uh, in 2019, uh, basically, uh, we need to motivate ourselves and uh, uh, having uh, uh, Islamabad culture as well, and uh, our parents are very motivated towards ourselves as well. So, uh, all the people and the public who uh, demotivate us and having a verbal and a physical uh, violence against us, uh, I think uh, that's uh, the message for today is for the 8th March is that uh, we are at a place where you can't even be or think to be. In, as uh, there are not male cyclists uh, recognized in Islamabad in uh, Pakistan as well. So um, having a thicker skin, as Mehek said as well uh, before, uh, that we need to motivate or we need to give them a message that we are uh, here and we are able to motivate or uh, having a, or we can all have a uh, community as well to have a, a women federation as well to prove ourselves that we are stronger than you as well. Again, so. about the mindset, being mentally tough. I mean, if, I, if a boy goes um, to a cricket ground, I mean, getting from point A to point B and back is not a problem. Nobody really thinks about it. But for a girl getting from, point, uh, getting from their home to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to a sporting complex or a ground or wherever, that's a problem. Transportation, are you going alone? Your brother should be accompanying you or you're some... A uh, male member of the family should be accompanying you so you don't get harassed. You have to deal with all these things. Exactly. This is what uh, kind of environment, what kind of society we are living in. Basically, uh, there are so many issues, so many problems girls are, women are facing all around the world, like mobility, like transportation, everything. So what we need to do is to empower them, to organize them, that to like, live independently, like live on their self own. I guess, you know, the fact that we're, let's talk about the positive, positive things now. The fact that we're sitting here and having this 
discussion means that progress has been yeah. made. Yeah. And even in the, over the last couple of years in the West with the, the hashtag Me Too movement, I mean, we're, we're, at a, we're at a watershed moment now where women feel like they can speak, how, speak mm -hmm. out and they will be heard. And we've seen Pakistani women doing, uh, Pakistani women doing it as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure female athletes have faced problems or issues of, with harassment. But again, you know, m maybe it's easier for, for some girls who are from a different strata of society, but just think about young girls in, 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 in rural areas who don't have that same kind of awareness. It's mm -hmm. still very, very tough for them to speak out. But the fact that we're here today on uh, national television <laughs> speaking about it means that we have made progress. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're not, we're not scared to talk about these things today on national television. And I think that's, that's huge progress, like you said, on its own. And I mean, okay, yeah, we may be from the main cities of Pakistan. And that's why, you know, we have that, ex we have more exposure than the people, than the women in the villages and the little girls growing up in the villages or in the rural areas, like you said. And but, I mean, of course, there's room for a lot of progress, but we should always look at the positives as well, that, you know, we're not, we're not, we, c we could be way behind in terms of the way, like the way things were back in, back in the day, but we're not, we've made progress, we can talk about this, women can come on TV now, women can come and speak their minds, they can freely talk about their sport, you know, they can talk about the problems in sport, they can talk about anything. So, I mean, definitely we have made progress and there may be a long way to go, but I think that we're definitely going in the right direction. Right, very quickly, we've only got a few uh, minutes remaining. I'd like, to, I'd like to ask you about your goals, where you want to be in your sport. Uh, Mehek, have you set yourself any, any short-term goals? Uh, short-term, well, right now I'm just trying to focus on playing better and trying to be mentally stronger because that's something that I really, really want to improve, improve at. And um, I think winning a few national championships would definitely be one of my one of my goals for now, for this year anyway, for the next few coming months. Inshallah, I'm yeah, sure inshallah. it's going to happen. Inshallah. Hina, you've uh, already achieved quite a lot. Where do you want to be? Uh, for now, I think um, cycling uh, is only a thing to be, a, it's a towards a healthy way of life. So I think I'll just uh, stick to that for now. But uh, in the future, I would like to uh, rep be represented as internationally as well to represent Pakistan. Uh, but there's not much platform as yet. But uh, internationally, I would like to achieve more uh, uh, achievements as well in to rep represent Islamabad and to motivate women and to represent Pakistan. And Ms. Pa? Um, I just want to say that I want more girls to come in this sport, in this field. I want. Uh, to recognize these sports all around the world. I want to Pakistan, I want to represent Pakistan in this game, in this sport. Right. Well, ladies, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much for coming on this show and talking about this very important issue. Thank you very much Thank for you. being Thank here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Keep watching Sports Extra on PTV World. See you next time. Bye-bye.